so I guess I work in fashion now. Uh, I've been doing this channel in New York City for a few years and I've flown to meet other people in the industry in Tennessee, in Mexico, in Utah, and Guatemala. And they're always surprised uh, when they learn that I spent almost 10 years working in fitness before I started this business. But I don't think fitness and fashion are as different as people think. And I'm not talking about athletic wear, if that's why you clicked on this video. When I say I worked in fitness, I mean I have a journalism master's and I spent many years writing articles about fitness and nutrition for places like Men's Health, Vice, Popular Science, Huffington Post. I bought a little percentage of a strength sports website where I spent four years working. So like they sent me to Peru to cover Olympic weightlifting. I interviewed all the CrossFit champions. I, I still host the web show at World's Strongest Man actually. And now I make content about clothes and shoes. So why do I think both of these seemingly unrelated industries are so interesting? This might sound a bit generic, and I know that my experience won't be the same as everyone else's, but personally, I found that putting work into my body and my clothing had profound impacts on my self-image and my confidence. I want to note that you can feel this way if you just focus on aesthetics when you work out. I spend more time on strength work, and I find it better for me personally at increasing the confidence in my body's movement. Big compound lifts help the body to function as a unit and when I'm walking around town, I walk with more purpose, I move better, my posture is better, and I feel more prepared for what the world might throw at me. Wearing clothes you love does the same thing. And yeah, wearing clothes that fit well and look good will be noticeable to other people. And let's be honest, whether we like it or not, the way others perceive us does impact our interactions and our relationships. If you have a cool leather jacket and boots, you look cooler. We can all acknowledge that, right? Like those are universal symbols of cool. And even if you yourself are not cool, and I'm not, people see you as cooler and that colors your interactions differently. And to speak a bit more broadly, there have been a ton of studies on what's called attractiveness bias. How more attractive people are more likely to succeed in job interviews, get promotions and so on. And that fitness, of course, typically makes you more attractive, right? For women, this tends to get called erotic capital, but I don't want to get too far into that. Well-dressed men are, are more likely to succeed, more likely to get asked out, more likely to get a job and get promoted. And being well-dressed, according to some research, even seems to help make up for physical unattractiveness and flaws. So in other words, the world responds better to you when you're fit and when you're well-dressed. So obviously you can optimize your odds of having a good day, and dare I say it, a good life if you pay attention to both your fitness and your wardrobe. But both of these areas also impact your self-perception. In the Journal of Experimental Social Psychology, a study found people feel smarter and more confident when they're wearing lab coats. That's not something I'd recommend or something that's crazy relevant, but a lot of people saw this conclusion was important for showing how clothing can change your self-perception. Other researchers also found that wearing a suit improves confidence, but also that simply dressing well, which is one of the few aspects of our body that we can change, helps with self-perception. And dressing well doesn't just mean suits. This graph in research from Old Dominion University shows the predictable finding that you feel better about yourself in casual clothes than you do in loungewear. And dressy casual makes you feel better than that. Interestingly, dressy casual ranked higher than business casual or business professional, which would suggest that, and this is what my channel focuses on, Wearing an outfit that's informal but still really nice can be the best way to have a great self-perception. It's outranked only by a tuxedo in this research, and it ranks higher than business professional. My hypothesis is that this is because when you dress casually, it's because you're doing whatever you want that day, and it's not a dress code that's being enforced upon you like business wear is. But that's just my conjecture. It also found that loungewear makes you feel more lazy, dresses makes you feel more productive. I could go on and on here, but if your reaction to all this is that clothes and muscles uh, shouldn't have such a big impact on your daily life and your self-image, this quote from New York Times columnist Teresa Riordan in Inventing Beauty was, was interesting. She said, the idea that beauty is unimportant or a cultural construct is the real beauty myth. We have to understand beauty or we will always be enslaved by it. Like you can take part in these rituals and these images without, you know, you can do it from a distance, you know, without being fully, fully invested in it, rather more like you're playing the game, you know? Like another part of how I perceive the interplay between these topics, between fitness and fashion, is that it's, uh, it's about accepting your faults and when useful, working on them. The application to fitness is obvious, but with fashion, such a crucial step is discovering and accepting your body type 
and ensuring you get clothes that fit and complement your shape, whatever that might be. Like I never had jeans that fit well until I recognized that I do have a big tall butt and big thighs, I'm very quad dominant. Button downs never really worked for me until I recognized that I have a weirdly long torso. These are the reasons I'm a lot better at sumo deadlifts than conventional, by the way. Acknowledging the way my body is and embracing it led me to, for instance, realizing that the perfect jeans for me are high rise, relaxed, tapered fits. Now that means there are a lot of jean companies I can't buy from because they don't make that very specific fit, a little sacrifice in the journey, I guess, but clothes just look so much better on me now that my butt isn't peeking out from my waistline all the time. And to get here, yeah, I had to accept that I have a big butt and accept what my body is rather than what I think it, uh, it should be or what others think is, is ideal, right? But clothes exist out there to make every body type look better. You just have to work out what yours is. You know what I mean? Like my point is that getting into clothing can make you see your body differently and more realistically like strength training can. So there's, there's also a humility that's tied into the confidence aspect, which, which is what I like. I mean, at the end of the day, of course, fitness and fashion may both involve others' perception of you, but the ultimate value is in self-perception and confidence. You move more confidently throughout your life, you feel more prepared for what might come, and the world responds positively to you in kind. We do live in a world where it's considered you know, where it's polite to dress well for someone else. And in a world where you're more likely to be successful in all areas, if you're fit and well-dressed, I mean, maybe that's an imperfect world, but that is the world we live in and no one is really totally immune to those like societal undercurrents. And I just say embrace that everything works out better when you're fit and well-dressed, especially because fitness has the added bonuses of decreasing stress, increasing longevity, improving sleep, and reducing injury risk. It just sucks having to find athletic fit shirts. All right, that's my video on fitness and fashion. I guess it's sort of like a culmination of uh, over a decade in uh, both industries, right? It's a bit of a weird one, but I don't know. I was just having some thoughts on that and I thought it would be kind of cool to share. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, and uh, make sure you subscribe as well if you just kind of came here from somewhere else because normally I spend a lot of time talking about boots and uh, jeans and jackets and all other kinds of stuff. So uh, yeah, stick around. No, you didn't. You were cringing the whole time.